Now, as we head down river today, ladies and gentlemen, we are travelling through the one square mile city of London. And as we do so, we pass many points and places of interest along the way. Now, there are no guides, there are no commentators on board the boats. But what we could do as crew members as we make our way down river is just pass on some of our local knowledge, pointing out a few buildings and a few bridges that we pass along the way. Would anybody on the boat like this as we head down river? A few points and places of interest, yeah? Okay, we will endeavour to do this for you. As I said, folks, we're not guides, we're not commentators, we are merely the crew. Okay, we'll do our best. But unfortunately, this little talk does only come in one language. Okay? And that will be some sort of English. So I do apologise to anybody who might not understand. I will speak slowly, I will speak clearly. And hopefully, everybody sort of understands what I'm saying. Okay? Okay. So we'll start off on the right. We are leaving behind London's most visited tourist attraction, the London Eye. The wheel on the right holds 32 of those pods, and each pod represents a borough here in London. It takes about 30 minutes to complete one full circle, although on very busy days they have been known to speed it up to get as many people on as possible. On a clear day here in London, from the very top of the eye, and on a day very much like today, you're going to see for about 30 miles in every direction. It's almost £20 a person to go on the London Eye. We only really ever hear good reports from people who have been on the eye, and as I said, it is London's most visited tourist attraction. The first bridge we pass beneath on our journey today is the Charing Cross Railway Bridge. Either side we have the footbridges, and if there's anybody up there walking across, give them a little wave. A wave and smile to the people on the bridge. It keeps them happy, it keeps their hands busy, and it stops them throwing things at us. Sometimes <laughs> like today, for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, we're not safe yet, there's another bridge on this side, so do keep waving and do keep smiling. Hello there, come and kiss away wave your visible gear. <laughs> As we get through the bridge, we go to the right and we see the Royal Festival Hall. This is one of the finest concert halls anywhere in the world. Opened in 1951 for the Festival of Britain. The building is completely soundproof and this is due to the very noisy Charing Cross railway line which runs directly alongside the building. Frank Sinatra and Pavarotti are just two of the stars who have performed in the Royal Festival Hall. Now we go to our left hand side and have the oldest monument here in London. This is Cleopatra's Needle and it's over 3,500 years old. It's actually older than London itself. It weighs 180 tons, and it was presented to the British government by a very thankful Egyptian government to commemorate our defeat of the French at the Battle of the River Nile. And there is a twin to this column, and that stands in Central Park, New York. The bridge is Waterloo, nicknamed the Ladies' Bridge. It was built by ladies during the Second World War, when a lot of men were away at war fighting for king and country. The bridge has been built using a very expensive, self-cleansing golden stone. And it means every time it rains here in London, the face of this bridge gets a thorough clean. Buckingham Palace and St Paul's Cathedral are just two buildings here in London which are faced with this self-cleansing Portland stuff. We go to the right and we see a concrete building with a display board. This is the National Theatre. It houses three theatres in that one building. It's been described by a Prince Charles as resembling a nuclear carbuncle. He's not a fan of the design of the building. And he's not alone. It's also been voted by some of London's leading architects as the ugliest building on the banks of the Thames. Looking at the building, I don't suppose you could really disagree. But the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover, definitely applies to this building because the theatres inside are without doubt some of the best in the country. 
the next on the right, behind the trees, we can just make out a low-lying glass-fronted building. And behind that, there's a tall office block. Now, these two buildings go together to make Kent House, the headquarters for ITV television. And it's from these buildings that we get many of our TV shows. Such classics as Jeremy Kyle. This morning, X Factor, and all the other rubbish. <laughs> it comes out here. It's also from the buildings on the right, when they have their news reports at various times during the day, that they actually use this shot of the River Thames we're now travelling through as their background. Now, anybody who lives here in London will have no doubt seen this on telly. Anybody who doesn't live in London, uh, right now, we could all be on national TV. Uh, news. So don't be shy. Give them a little wave over there on the right. You never know, do you? Hello, everybody. Hello, man. <laughs> no autographs. Especially if you're travelling with your loved one, you may get to see yourselves. I was talking about HM Presents. I thought it was down there. If you're travelling with somebody on there, else's nice. loved one, I suggest you quickly look to the left. Uh, people <laughs> have been caught out. Then on the right, the Oxo Tower, this red bricks building. And many years ago, this was a cold storage meat warehouse. But today, like many disused warehouses along the banks of the river, it's been converted into riverside apartments. Right at the top of the building, underneath the glass canopy, is the Harvey Nichols restaurant, voted one of the top ten restaurants here in London. To our left, a building with a green sloping roof. This is the old City of London School, where many famous dignitaries were taught here in London. And if you look in between the arched windows of the building, you'll see four statues. From left to right, John Milton, William Shakespeare, Francis Bacon, and Sir Isaac Newton. Four of this country's famous. one is a road bridge, the second one a railway bridge, but between the two bridges you'll see these red pillars, and this is all that remains of the very first railway bridge that spanned the River Thames. As you can see, the top half of the bridge has been removed, it became unsafe, but they could not remove the supports for fear of undermining the foundations of the bridges on either side. And as we get through the last bridge here, ladies and gentlemen, we reach roughly the halfway point down to the Tower of London. How are we doing so far? Are we enjoying it so far? Yes? Excellent. As I said, we're not guides or commentators, folks. We're only the crew, but it does seem a bit silly to come out here and no one explains about the buildings and the bridges. So hopefully, these few words just make your journey a bit more interesting. Now, up to our left-hand side, we see the dome and the cross of St Paul's Cathedral considered by most as Sir Christopher Wren's masterpiece. Now, it took Wren about 35 years to build St Paul's. It was completed in the year 1710. It stands 365 feet high from its base to the top of the Golden Cross. And many of our national heroes are buried inside St Paul's in its famous crypt. And these include the Iron Duke, the Duke of Wellington. Lord Nelson, and of course the architect himself, Sir Christopher Wren. Now, if you're here in London for a few days, you should definitely try and visit St Paul's. It's one of the finest buildings, if not the finest building, anywhere in the city. Ahead of us, we have the nearest bridge to span the River Thames. This is the Millennium Bridge. You probably know it better as the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. Opened by the Queen on a Saturday morning. It was closed the very same afternoon by the police for being unsafe. It used to sway about a foot in either direction. People walking across the bridge were actually falling over. They were hanging on for dear life. The ones that didn't fall over were being sick. 
on the ones that had. <laughs> it was a complete disaster. They had to close the bridge, re-stabilise it, it was reopened again, and it's been perfectly safe ever since. No more wibbling, and no more wobbling. To our right, we're passing a replica of William Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. The white circular structure with a thatched roof is an exact replica of Shakespeare's Globe. It was built in exactly the same way the original would have been built. The brainchild of a man called Sam Wanamaker. He was a film and theatre director who sadly died before its completion. The project was taken on by his daughter, Zoe, and it was opened by herself and the Queen 16 years ago. They reenact Shakespeare's plays inside the building, and plays get performed in the traditional way. Uh, there's no microphones, there's no stage lighting. It was frequented by Dr. Johnson, Samuel Pepys, Charles Dickens, and William Shakespeare. That's the club problem. is mentioned in the diaries of Pepys and Johnson. 400 years the old. The Anchor Pub has also starred in a few films, uh, most notably at the end of Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise and Ving Rhames are sat outside this pub having a pint of beer, celebrating their successful mission. This is the Cannish Street Railway Bridge without passing through. Once through the bridge, coming up on the way, we see the back end of a pirate ship. Now, this is a replica of Sir Francis Drake's vessel, the Golden Hind, the ship in which he sailed around the world. He was the first Englishman to do so. It took him nearly four years. He had a crew of 80 cutthroat sailors. The replica on our right is a full working ship. It has retraced Drake's voyage twice, and it's set to do so a third time. Ahead of us is London Bridge, the most historic bridge that stands across the Thames. There's been a London Bridge on this site for 2,000 years, dating back to the Romans. The London Bridge, which stood before this one, was sinking into the mud. It was going to be demolished until an American businessman bought the bridge for two million dollars. He had it taken down stone by stone, he shipped it out to America, and it now stands across Lake Havasal in the Arizona desert as a tourist attraction. Has anybody seen the old London Bridge in America? Yeah, you have. A lot of people think we're telling a tall tale, but it is 100% true. The old London Bridge is now in America. And the story goes, the man that bought London Bridge thought he was buying Tower Bridge. So you can imagine the look on his face when he opened the box and saw London Bridge. But this is a common misconception. He knew he was buying London Bridge. If you was paying $2 million for something, you'd know what you was buying. He knew 100% he was buying London Bridge and not Tower Bridge. Now, ladies and gents, what we're going to do for you, we're going to take you right down to Tower Bridge and then turn the boat side on. Okay, so don't rush to the front of the boat to get a picture. We'll get you in the perfect photo uh, opportunity, okay? Just wait a couple of minutes. Folks, if you want to stand up to take a picture, please do, but then return to your seat, okay? Because you do block other people's view behind you, okay? Look up to the right and we see what is now the tallest building.